anime is weird. You don't have to spend much time around the medium to pick up on this. From fan service, it seems like every anime has at least to a degree to characters with very bizarre hair colors and eyes that take up half their face, and not to mention the entirety of FLCO, anime is not something you can call normal. For many people, this weirdness can't be a turnoff, and for many, it can make it impossible to take a show seriously if it has too much of this. However, I'm a bit different in that I can take something absurd seriously. And because of that, I am drawn to shows that can thrive off of insanity, like Kill the Kill, Gurren Lagann, again, FLCL. Yes, they're crazy and over the top, and I really enjoy this, but at the same time, I can enjoy their more serious side of it that they're trying to show. Today, we're looking at a show where insanity does not even begin to describe it. Ori Twin Tails, Minari Masu, or as it's translated, gonna be the Twin Tails. So, are you ready? Nah, probably aren't, but let's go anyway. The premise here is something that turned away a lot of people. I admit, I had no expectations when I first watched the first episode, only deciding to give it a try because some of my friends did, and I figured I should at least see what they are talking about. Our main character, Soji, is a high school student. Surprise, surprise. He is obsessed with a Twin Tails hairstyle. You know when a person has two ponytails? And really, I do not use the word obsessed lightly here. He is crazy about them. But he isn't the only one, no. There's an alien race who has come to Earth to steal the love of Twin Tails from the world. A mysterious person by the name Toral shows up and gives Soji the power to turn into the twin-tailed magical girl with tail red to stop these aliens, which he does with lots of fire and explosions. As the episodes progress, more and more of these aliens come, oftentimes with their own obsessions, some stranger than others, which tail red must fight. Soon he is joined by his childhood friend Aika, who transforms into tail blue, and together they defend the Earth. Make no mistake, this show is completely stupid but it knows about stupidity and as such is able to thrive on it. The high point in Twin Tales is just how much fun it is to watch. Each episode gave me something to laugh about, just wondering where they're going to take this crazy plot next. In some ways, it's a parody magical girl anime, superhero anime, and this made me love it. And because of this, many of the problems that I would otherwise have with the show don't really matter. Things that happen that just don't make any sense, well, normally this would aggravate me, this made the show even better. There was also some surprisingly emotional moments here. I think this is due to what I call the Oron effect. It is when a show is just very lighthearted, and this makes me lower my guard, but then it's able to like, put some emotional moment in there, and that just makes it all the more powerful. Twin Tails was able to do just that. I was not expecting anything serious here, just more extreme insanity. And because of this, it really did succeed in getting an emotional reaction out of me a couple times. I never would have guessed that someone changing their hair shell would affect me on that level, but well, Twin Tails did a lot of things I did not expect. Still, even with the fun I had here, there were a number of things I just didn't like. The first was with the ending, which while did have a climax I enjoyed, it also left a number of plot threads open and really requires a season 2 to wrap them up. This show is also a harem which got quite aggravating at times. I'm not one for romance, so oftentimes when romance is in a show, it just gets in the way and I don't like it. Which was the case here, as I really did not care about the girl's interest in Soji, I just wanted more explosions. Yes, I'm easy to please. The humor also got quite old at times, especially when Toro would make a romantic advance on Soji, only for her to get attacked and beat up by Ike. This was funny the first couple times, but then it quickly got old when it was done every episode multiple times. Overall though, I did like the story, if only for how fun it was. Nothing super deep or complex, but out of all the shows I've seen recently, it's probably the best at being what it wanted to be, and for that, it receives my praise. Our main character is Soji. As I said earlier, his main characteristic is his love for Twin Tails. Beyond this though, he's a very plain protagonist. Yes, he's a good person, he wants to help his friends, he wants to fight for Twin Tails, he doesn't really want a romantic relationship with all these girls, and that's about it very standard, and while he does work as a basic main character, there's just nothing to stand out about him. There's also his childhood friend Aika, who is in many ways the voice of reason to the rest of these nutjobs. She also keeps Toral in check when Toral decides, oh, I should sleep with Soji, that would be a great idea. So that, I like that part, daughter. She is your very stereotypical Tsunade, and I don't think that's how you pronounce it, but whatever. And yeah, she likes Soji too, it really offers nothing special. We also have Arina, who about halfway through the show becomes Tail Yellow, and she is the best character of the show. Of course, this isn't really saying much. The thing I liked about her is that she actually has some development to her, although even then it wasn't all that much. And lastly, who could forget about Toro? The one who gives all the Twin Tails the power to fight and is shrouded in mystery for much of the show. I think I would have liked her character if she wasn't constantly trying to sleep with Soji, but even then, there wasn't anything all that good about her. Let's be honest though, you don't watch a show like this for the great characters. So the fact that they're rather poor doesn't really hurt the show. Still, if they could have taken the absurdity of the show and then add good characters on top of it, we could have had something really great, but sadly, this wasn't the case. 
The animation for the show is never anything fantastic, but it does look pretty good at least at times. There are other times though where it just looks bad and others where it just feels lazy. Even the battles themselves are often a mixed bag. Some of them look really good, but others they seem to pull away from the action to like show the dust of the most recent explosion, and this really hurt how I could get into them. For the most part though, the animation was okay. The soundtrack too was really nothing more than okay. Sure, the battles have some decent action music, but at the same time, the only song that seemed memorable at all was the insert song during the final battle, and that was mainly because I was trying to read the lyrics and also read the dialogue. Now, looking back, the song was pretty decent. After listening to the soundtrack on its own, I found I really liked a lot of the character themes, a lot of the high energy rock music. Nothing that exceptional, just fun music that I can enjoy. What really stood out to me here, though, were the openings and endings. The opening had a pretty good animation, catchy song, but what made it so memorable were the lyrics. Well, I specifically saying, forget about there's no logic to it, which really perfectly fitting for the show. I also liked how the opening in some ways foreshadowed what was going to happen, and that, I always like it when a show can do that. The ending was also quite good, having some cliché lyrics about love and hope and courage, but it really fit with the show, and that made uh, the show one of the few times where I would watch the ending after each episode instead of just moving on. Is the show good? For something like this, it's not a simple yes or no question. I have been rather harsh on the show here, and no matter how you look at it, this show has its problems. But Twin Tales isn't trying to be something great. It merely wants to bring the viewer along for a fun time, and that is something it does very well. It gave me a similar feeling I had when I was watching Kill la Kill, though I will admit I believe that Kill la Kill is better in pretty much every way, but that doesn't mean this isn't a fun show as well. Regardless, let us move to the final score. You may notice I have changed my scoring system quite a bit from my last review, so if you're curious exactly about how that works, check the description for a link. Anyway, I give Ori Twin Tails the Naso Nusa Nasa I can't pronounce this. Let's switch to English. I give It's Gonna Be a Twin Tails an overall score of a 6.40 out of 10 and a rating of worth checking out. If you enjoy a stupid but fun show, then you really should check it out, though I admit there isn't much here for those who don't like that type of show. Therefore, it gets my middle rating. If you enjoy Twin Tails, there's no better show for me to recommend to you than Kill a Kill, as it's quite possibly the most fun show I've ever watched. I'd also point it toward... <gasps> My mental choices are completely interfering with my high school romantic comedy. <sighs> yes, that's the name of the show. If the long title doesn't tell you that it's going to be something fun, then I don't know what will. That is everything for me today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I will talk to you next time.